Good morning. Hey, y'all. Good morning. It's your girl, Sharita. What's going on? I'm out in the garden right now. You running after I drop the kids off, I come and check out the garden, see if anything needs to be wo- Yeah, check on my babies, my other babies. But I decided to hang with y'all while I'm doing it, okay? So y'all gonna help me check the garden. And I want to talk about uh, creating a schedule for our kids this summer. It's going to be a game changer. If you've never done it before, create a schedule, okay? So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Sharita, okay? Uh, and my students call me Miss Sharita. Hey, Nancy, welcome. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, and... I help kids improve their behavior, uh, focus, literacy, and math, okay? And I do it online, and I also tutor I tutor the kids and coach them, but I also provide coaching to parents as well when they're improving their children's behavior and learning from home, because that's what we do, right, Nancy? That's how we do, okay? So I want to talk this morning about, like, all of us, like, let's really create a summer schedule for our kids all right whether they started uh the summer already some of my students are uh living in georgia and they already finished in school right now some of my students are from las vegas and they're finishing school very soon um and then the other students are in the east coast like me and um we we end in june right but regardless wherever you from Whatever the case is, okay, get them a summer schedule, okay? I'm going to talk to you as a mom and as a professional. I was a mental health specialist. Um, I was a mental health specialist and special education teacher. And I know that when kids come back from the break, two things happen. One, they don't want to do no work. They don't want to sit down. Teachers got to work real hard to get them on track. You know what I mean? Put the structure back in. That's a lot on a teacher. And you know what? It's not just about the teacher. It's about your child. Now your child is having a slow start to the new year. All right? Because whenever your child doesn't have self-discipline or self-control, whenever our children don't have those, then it gets in the way of their academic progress. So while the teacher is working with them to improve their focus and make them sit down and make them listen, follow the rules and all this other stuff, right? Um, they could be learning and they can be growing, okay? So that's one reason um, why. It's because they don't be wanting to do nothing and they still have summer vacation on their mind. They still want to chill and everything. Uh, and they're used to um, uh, just starting late and getting and getting up late. You know what I mean? Uh, so we want to have them have structure throughout. So that's the first reason uh, is they don't really be wanting to do nothing. Number two is uh, a lot of times kids lose valuable learning that they, you know, gain during the school year. They lose it, okay, during the summer. And the teachers got to really work hard to replace that, right? Again, our children will be running behind the bus, running after it instead of driving it. We want our children driving the bus. So we want to make sure that our kids have a schedule. Uh, it could be modified. They don't have to get up as early. But when the kids are waking up when they want to, and if they wake up at a decent time, okay. But, and if it's before the time that you want them to get up, right? Okay, that's fine. But if you have a child that's like, I want to sleep till 12, I want to sleep till 1. Sometimes they get real crazy. 1, 2, right? Most of the day is already done. And think about it as adults. If we lived our days like that, how productive would we be unless we had a job, okay? that we worked at night and then we slept during the day, right? So we are, are growing our children, uh, you know, for later on in life as well, okay? So we want to have a schedule so that they know that uh, it's, this is, this. you have to get up. This is what I want you to do to get up. This is your lunch time. This is your dinner time. These are your chores for the day. This is your independent study time, right? 
I don't know why the connections give me a problem today. Um, this is your leisure time. Okay, so we're not taking away their summer. We're just structuring it. Okay, do you want your child to be playing a game all day or on the phones all day or watching TV all day? Or driving you crazy all day, <laughs> right? <laughs> like if you work from home, right? You know what I'm saying? I work from home. Being that I work from home, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, time that I'm going to be working. And if they all around, uh, they don't have on their mind what they're supposed to be doing or what the right now this is what I'm going to be focused on. Something that's going to grow them. Something that is going to help have them you know, get their hands dirty as far as like, you know, we got gardening back here, so we're going to have gardening this summer or chores they have to do or read a book they're reading or a puzzle they're doing, you know what I'm saying? Or a project, a science project they're going to be doing. Like, they they have to be occupied still, okay? And it has to be, uh, excuse the background noise, it has to be something that's customized for them and their growth but also keeps the structure in place so that by the time they go back to school, they they have good structure. They've taken advantage of the summer and have grown in a bunch of different areas. And they've done things they've learned. This is an excellent time for them to get to uh, to work on uh, things that interest them, interest led learning. Okay, so my advice is to sit down with your kids. And find out from them what they will, what activities they would like to do during the summer, right? And then if you have some activities, you can add some in there too. Uh, structure it out and then have a schedule of when they're supposed to be doing what. Sure, they can have some late days if, if you approve, right? <laughs> they have some late days, but they, but they should know if they want to sleep late or if they want to get up, uh, you know, if they want to stay up later. Is under these conditions and mom has to say okay yes for this night you can get up you can stay up a little later and this is the time that you need to be up by tomorrow and this is the time so we want our kids to do that so that they can be responsible um, and accountable and then start to manage your routine okay so that's really my advice let me know what y'all think about this summer because me and my kids could be very structured this summer like i said i work from home the house still got to be clean right we're still going to be cooking together we're going to be baking together we're going to be out here in the garden working together go on walks together go to the park i just went with my teenager to the park the other day i'm not sure if i posted that video but she didn't have to be to school until 10 30. So she went with me to the park. And while we were there, we walked. We had a nice walk. And then we just stood on this this little landing they have, like right before um, by the lake. And turtles swam up to us. And geese swam, geese, geese swam around us. We saw the geese come out of the water and start eating together. And they were around us. It was just so amazing. It was a wonderful experience, right? So we're going to be doing that. And we're going to be going to the museum, going to the zoo, going to the beach. But it's all going to be planned in advance because mama is working. I work from home. And I would love to do all these wonderful things, but it's got to be organized. Y'all have to follow the, the schedule, right? I got rules in my house, okay? And and then you're going to have time to just choose something that you want to do. You're going to have time to just relax, right? But have some structure because when they go back to school in september or august depending on where you're from right there's going to be structure they're going to need to get up early they're going to need to get to school one time they're going to need to be prepared for school and they need to sit in that class and work and then it, there's going to be a period for math there's going to be a period for language arts or english it's going to be a period for science it's going to be prepared for a uh, gym and art and you know this is their life this is their life in school and a lot of kids have difficulty with transitions and a lot of kids transition from one class to the next or one activity to the next we could teach them that at home and a lot of kids have difficulty with focusing on the task at hand because they don't feel like doing it no more let's build up that stamina let's work on that at home so that when they get to school they got a flow they're into it it's easy to do 
And um, now the teacher just got to teach. And they just got to learn. Because we worked on that structure from home. Okay? So comment below. Let me know what you think kids should be doing doing during the summer. Okay? Um, and what, what activities have you uh, done with your kids in the summer or had them do? So that we can all share with each other and we can get ideas from each other. All right? But now, let's go on the garden tour and i hope that uh the connection hangs out because i'm really excited to show y'all what has been happening since the last time i did a video and i and i'm editing it but this is live okay all right let's rock and roll all right so this is the overall view of the garden backyard garden in effect okay oops the connection again this is my little area where i have um my broccoli and i have this lettuce right here and then the romaine in the back i've made a, a marvelous salad with that yesterday okay don't mind the, in the back we're still like moving stuff around and stuff and organizing things there's some onions growing on the ground uh this salad i could i made a salad for both of these um these lettuce plants but look it's still so much more left you know and then when we come out jazzy just be picking the lettuce this is my my favorite i can't wait to see this one it it's a graffiti cauliflower okay uh i've never seen or used that before so i'm very excited about that okay this is different I had to pick that actually maya picked that one and then right here my best friend in the whole wide world we got the rosemary yeah i'm gonna have a big rosemary bush y'all in this plant we got three different ones okay so let's turn around okay so oh we've got the ceiling take a while to to um sprout and grow this is a watermelon seedling mm-hmm this is parsley basil another parsley your girl loves par another pars. i love parsley i'm i'm just saying though this one is a rosemary another rosemary i had i love rosemary too but this right here is what i'm most proud about is this scotch bonnet seed scotch bonnet pepper seed my husband's uh, family is from Kingston, Jamaica. He was born here. And I've learned how to cook a lot of the dishes. But scotch bonnet peppers is not... Usually I find other peppers in the store, especially with planting. Um, you know, I went to Home Depot and they have every kind of uh, pepper. I had to find these online. So this is scotch bonnet. It just sprouted. I'm so excited. Hello, honey. Welcome to the family okay yeah your girl kind of went pepper crazy this year i got a lot of peppers so let me show you what's going on in here this is a tomato plant look at hello baby these was all small they are getting big this is a tomato plant this is a roma tomato yeah and the girls helped me put all this together okay even went to the store and shop with me to buy the plants and everything and then we would put it together i put this this is this is ghetto fab right here y'all <laughs> but i wanted to see if i could provide a little bit of shade and i'm not sure 100 percent if this is even provide shade but this is some tool that i had that i draped around this plant because these sugar snap peas were let's go i'm gonna let sneak out in here were kind of they looked a little light to me. So I felt like they were getting a little too much sun. So, and I had that problem last year. So I put this around so that it wouldn't have too much sun on it. Um, I also put these here because I have spinach growing in. This is my little spinach bed. Uh, I put these here because the spinach was getting too much sun. So I put these stakes here to provide some shade. So it's like, it's like sun, shade, sun, shade, sun, shade, like that. But since then, they start, they love it. Look how green they are. And they are growing. Yeah. Hey. I'm stooped up about my garden, y'all. Okay, for the first time, I believe some of the stuff I forgot what it was, to tell you the truth. But, because <laughs> I didn't label everything. And I, oh, I don't like when I do that. 
but I believe that this is Brussels sprouts. So I have these four Brussels sprouts in here. I had the same thing going with the steaks, but they're growing over the steaks, okay? I put a tomato and then greens and then an herb and also a green bean. Well, I think these are yellow beans, yellow wax beans, okay? They're like green beans, but they're yellow. I set this up because for the greens, first of all, I want to have a lot of greens. I put a tomato because it's going to shade, provide shade to the greens. The green, and this summer is coming, and and the greens don't really survive when it's too hot. Okay, so I've set this up like this. This right here is lim lemon thyme. I absolutely love to, woo, y'all. That smell like lemon candy. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love to to rub on the on the herbs and uh, smell them. Here, y'all ready for this? I don't think y'all ready for this. I don't think y'all ready for this. That's what I'll be singing to my students when I'm about to challenge them with spelling word. They come out of my head and they be like, Miss Sharita, you just made that up. That's not even a word. <laughs> right? Or if I'm cooking in the kitchen, I'll be like, y'all, no, I don't think y'all ready for this. So that, that's what I just did to y'all, okay? The first tomato plant with the first flower. And I always tell my girls, first come flowers, then come fruit. Now, we've got, oh my gosh, if you look closely, there's a cluster right here. This right here, this little branch right here is going to have, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's probably another one on the other side, seven tomatoes right here. And then if you look above, here's another one coming. This plant is not even big yet. This is the sun sugar yellow cherry tomato i love growing them because they're so pretty they taste good but they're so pretty okay right here i got now i have a brussels sprout here and another brussels sprout here i believe that's what these are uh but it's not as big it's getting bigger now it's not as big as the other one because it's got this big old kale back here that was small, but it's kind of taken over, okay? And I got parsley right here that um, I chopped down to make some spaghetti. Uh, we made spaghetti uh, what, last week, and then it started coming. I, I got some more from it yesterday, but they come right back. And how do I know that? Because I had a groundhog problem when I first started gardening, and I grew up big beautiful parsley plant it was huge it was like really big it was gorgeous and then i put it on the ground and then the next day i came in and the whole thing looked like this <laughs> the, whole thing, the groundhog ate the whole plant i was so upset <laughs> i was so upset groundhogs are ruthless y'all but but um, when I put everything on the tables, it came back. So that's when I knew, like, even if it's bitten, like, all of the parsley leaves are, are, are eat off the plant, it will come back. So, and it has, okay? But look how beautiful this kale is. And I want more kale. I planted some more seeds. Actually, no. That's the one, the seeds that I wanted that I did not have. I'm going to have to go get some. But I love kale. I want lots of kale. I use them in my smoothies. I, I saute them up and cook them. But... Your girl want to be eating greens all the time. So that's why I'm planting a lot of different seeds of different kinds of greens. Okay, so this is another tomato. Oh, I was about to say, I forgot what kind. But over here is the Roma, classic paste tomato. I want to make tomato paste. So I have this big old, it's growing big in this in this uh, planter. These are just totes, uh, like little bins where you store stuff in. This right here... These, uh, I don't know what this is. They were all, they fell. The seeds just fell into my bins because I keep them on the ground so that worms can get in them uh, during the fall and the winter. And then I bring them up because it's really important to me that this it's nature going on in here. It's food scraps in here. The worms are in here doing their things. Bugs in here. So I put them on the ground so they can do their thing. And then, lo and behold, this year... The bins have turned into their own ecosystem. This is my third year gardening. I'm still pretty new. And all kind of seeds. I've been pulling out all kind of weeds out of this thing. So I pulled out most of them. 
I pulled out most of them. I see them, I pull them, and then they could just lay on the top if it's something that's like a little. Um, but I'm I'm keeping these right here. Well, matter of fact, let me take take these out too. Actually, so yeah, yeah, help me in the garden today. Look how long those roots are. I'm being careful. I'm just leaving these here because I want to see what it turns out to be. Um, but I'm taking out most of them because they get so big that they will take away nutrients from what I'm actually trying to grow. So, yeah, that's why I got to take these out. This right here started out as a compost bin. And then uh looks like it's a potato there um, that needs to be covered. So I don't know what I'm doing right here. It's compost, a potato in there. Okay, let's uh, let's get past this bin. All right, now over here, this one is a little sweet 100 small fruited tomato. Uh, when I first got it, it looked like this. Okay, um, and the leaves were all curled, but I put it put it inside this bin um that has food scraps in it and and that's how i be feed and i got a lot of my gardening uh learn where i learned to garden from by robbie gardening on youtube so check her out this is where the bins come from this is what because i'm natural and I, I like just using i don't like using a lot of store-bought stuff um in my cooking or in my gardening so that's why i learned a lot from her um but when i did that the the plant livened up and it's starting to do much better so it's go green it was all like this color at first it's getting green and looks like yeah it looks like it's going to be growing some tomato soon oh sorry if that was too close but look where'd you come from that's another tomato seedling like <laughs> what <laughs> what so that one came on its own. I was not ready. I did not know that was going to happen. So I did not plan for that. So when this guy gets a little bigger, I'm going to have to move him. I'm going to take him out. I'm going to put him in water uh, and let the let it root. And then I'll plant it. Okay? Um, and then over here... No, that's not a tomato plant. So like I said before on the video that I did, this is live... How do I know this is a tomato plant? Because I think these are called trichomes. Um, the little fuzzies. They're called a little fuzzy. But it's hairy right here. That's how I know it's a tomato plant. So if something looks like it on top a little bit, but it doesn't have that, I know it's not a tomato plant. And here's the bean that was kind of folded up and lying down and still in the soil yesterday that now starting to open up, okay? I can't wait to, to for this to grow. I planted beans next to the tomato plants because the tomato plants love beans they need nitrogen and they get it from the bees that's what i learned and that's what i've been doing um and we have been harvesting tomatoes the girls come out all the time the things they eat the most in the garden are uh, tomatoes right off the tree lettuce they'll do kale uh cucumbers and green beans they just take them off and start eating them a lot of times stuff we're making in the house um and here's another Brussels ball back here. This is a curly parsley. I did the same little shading system here. At first, the leaves were kind of getting burned and it was like yellow around the edges. And I was like, this is getting too much sun. So I put these up here and then it started to come back. It got greener. It's doing better. So I, I learned, I'm learning about sun requirements and when it's too much sun. All right, uh, check this out. First year planting onions. These are red onions. I put them in and now they are getting bigger. Um, and, but if you look closely here, I also planted some sweet potatoes in here. And uh, I believe that this is coming from the sweet potato. I believe so. Like, is it sweet potato or is it the onion? I don't know because I'm a new, uh, new gardener. So if you know, let me know. Because I got one here and I got one there. But we have a volunteer tomato. And this is why I told myself, and I'm so hard-headed. I told myself I'm not going to plant any more tomatoes, this, uh, buy any tomato plants. Because I always have so much. Because they come up on their own. And they have to figure out what to do with them. But they're so awesome. I love them. I couldn't pass them up. So I bought like five. But then look what's happening in my soil by itself. 
this is why it's like i feel like once we learn how to really grow our own food we really don't have to be in the stores because food grows on its own it's a lot of food that will grow on its own and just keep coming back year after year without us doing anything and it's healthier for us and it's more natural we know where it came from that's how i am but look a tomato what's this nope Yep, a tomato, another tomato. What in the world? Where y'all come from? Right? <laughs> Three tomato plants. So, again, this one's getting kind of big. I'm going to have to move these out. No. What's this doing under here? Oh, no. Okay. So, let's go to the next bin. Wait till y'all see what's in this bin. <gasps> this bin needs, it's going to need water soon. Yep. It's getting dry on top even though i watered them really good yesterday so in this bin i have sorry that's my finger i have the onions that uh yeah they're doing pretty good here this is not a tomato come on out love you but you got to come on out because but look at this y'all y'all know what this is this right here is a cluster of tomato plants it must have been a tomato because when i compost i use kitchen scraps and whatever i compost it grows in these bins it must have been a tomato that busted and all the seeds just got sown right here and i think it was this guy i think this is the culprit so this is probably going to be another yellow uh sugar what was that i was about to say sugar daddy <laughs> sugar sweet yellow tomato cherry tomato i forgot what it's called but that's probably what this is going to be. But look at how many. It's great. Look how many tomato plants. So I'm definitely digging these up this week. And I'm going to have to separate them. This is going to give 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, At least 10 or more tomato, tomato plants. Are you serious? So that's why this year in my tomato system, I'm, I'm pruning and I'm growing them in rows. Uh, this is my first time doing this, so this is an experiment, you know. But I was so amazed. Like, are you? Look at all these tomatoes. This is not a tomato. Come on out. Come on out. I, I'm being really careful. Whenever I come around, I'm looking to see if there's anything I have to. All right, now. Uh, should I do this? No, it's more exciting if I go around the other way. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back through the garden. Let's go back. Let's go. Okay, shouldn't forget my phone out here. So I already told you about my little system here. Got it going on to the break of look. It's <laughs> scissors hanging down. It's, uh, whatever I had to do. Look, I'm gonna use whatever around me. Okay. So in this bin, I planted some red onions. Look, I didn't plant all my onions in bins because the lady at Home Depot told me they come up year after year. They keep coming back. So I didn't want them to really be in the bins. I'm going to be able to use the bins for other stuff. So I'm going to plant them in the ground. But my ground's not ready. We're over here getting ready. I'm going to start with cardboard first. Okay? Cardboard. And you see I got this from last year. I wish I saved all the leaves. But the leaves and the paper, all that's going to turn into soil. The food scraps turn into compost. But I learned that if you don't want the animals digging through because they smell food, you got to really put a lot of the dry material and soil on top. So that's what we're going to do. This is cardboard box is going to be a planter. This cardboard box that had my new bed in it is going to be a planter. This is going to be a planter. And then put holes in the bottom so that uh, the when it gets water, everything seeps through to the ground, softens up the ground, builds it up. There's tons of worms and tons of beautiful uh, uh, insects and everything under there that will help. And then uh, this will be an area uh, uh, planted. This whole area right here. Look at this big tree. I want this to be a tree collar, actually. This was here when we bought the house, okay? So got that down here. And over here is another tree. Uh, it's going to be moved out. This one, I'm not too sure. Look how pretty. But like I told you, I have a groundhog problem. So let's peek back here and see. My husband put the... Oh, wait, 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 wait. A little suspense. All right. So since groundhogs don't really like herbs that are, are researched just you know, All this is experimental. I'm learning. I put the time, which they didn't bother before here. This is time. Look at this 
It's a huge bush. This is this is the second year of it growing. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I got it last year. Look at it this year. Oh my gosh. Me using this in cooking. Also, I'm making herb tea with the thyme and the mint and the lemon balm. Okay, I'm gonna show you the mint and the lemon balm in a minute. Okay, so we got thyme here and we have oregano here. I had this one already and I just bought that one. And smell test. Smell test, y'all. Woo! Good gracious. Goodness gracious. What about you? You know, I gotta show you some love too. Oh my gosh, I did with the other hand, so they didn't kind of... Okay, so now that I've shown you that, now I'm going to show you so the groundhog. Let me peek. Because y'all, these things don't... These things scare me. <laughs> so down there, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a hole down there. With the ground, groundhogs have dug hole under the, under the shed, and they have tunnels. And... They have decimated my whole garden. This is when I started be, to become a tabletop gardener because, you know, I could not give up. I tried everything to keep them from my garden. I put cinnamon around. I put ammonia. I used hot pepper. I actually made hot pepper sauce for the peppers I was even growing and put it around their, their burrow and, and around my plants. And I actually very, you know, I don't know why. This is very silly of me, but I poured hot pepper onto the plants and it was burnt the plant leaves it was y'all should see me out here bugging and they kept coming back so the best thing that worked was you just put everything on top of tables and then when the groundhogs came out they stood in front of the tables they stood on their hind legs they looked so pitiful they couldn't reach nothing and then and then they they just we started to see less of them. They still come, but we started to see less of them. But I started being able to protect my food. Sometimes I'll let stuff fall. I'll t don't tell my husband, y'all. Sometimes I'll let stuff fall by the... By the and when I say let stuff fall, I mean I actually throw it over there. By the burrow so that they can get some food. <laughs> like if it's like a cucumber, you know, because that's what they like. They ate my cucumber plant. It didn't even grow cucumbers yet. They ate my cu cucumber plant down to nothing. But anyway, this is my husband's attempt. He put this stuff here. That groundhog came here and moved it right on the side and went up. All right, so now the other side. You see the other side of the shed is where we have these extra cans back here to give us some privacy because I actually had an argument with the neighbor recently. That's a whole nother story, y'all. But my, my husband <laughs> didn't like the way things went down. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's where we at. So, anyway right here is what he put like i think that's cement in there and it hasn't been moved okay but they just go around the other way and you know that they could just dig another area under the shed so we're looking for somebody to come in and do something specifically for groundhogs so we're going to handle that this is my mint y'all this is my mint the mint is going since these cans are now here i don't like that there it's going to go over there next to his cousin the time okay uh but look at this Y'all want to do a smell test? Look at this. Oh my gosh, mint. Oh, and it's so good in the summer. Last year, me and the girls were making lemonade with mint in it and lemon balm. Woo! So good. Okay, so now I'm going to start over here. See, me and the girls all did this together. They learn. They're learning. And they have learned, and we continue to learn as we try new things, how to garden, how to plant seeds, how to make compost, how to even make soil. I just did that recently uh, with them. And now they're going to be learning how to, well, Maya pulled a couple of weeds herself, okay? Uh, watering, feeding the plants, all that. So this is my lemon balm. I just cut a bunch of it, and we made herb waters with it. You just stuck these herbs, washed them real good and stuff. Lemon balm, mint, and thyme into water bottles. Put it in a fridge. And when you drink that, oh my gosh, I did it for me. That's what I be always talking to moms about. Self-care. That's why I was talking about self-care, y'all. Because you take care of yourself. But what I've learned is as a mom, the benefit of making yourself a priority, okay? Because a lot of times we put ourselves on the back burner. 
the benefit of making yourself a priority is be is that you become a self-care leader in your own home so before i just be trying to focus on my kids eat healthy and then focus on them but i do they 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 have a lot of healthy habits that i've taught them but a lot of times like recently i was just sitting at the table making this and, and then mine's like can i make one could you just say can i make one and then they made theirs and took it to school and was drinking it so good so good here we've got my favorite smell in a whole wide world lavender let me do a little smell test i'm gonna use a different finger oh my Whew! that's good that's good right there that smells good and i use it when i'm making oils like for her hair or sometimes i combine shea butter with different oils recently i had that with lavender and rosemary which is very good for the hair too and coconut oil and avocado oil there's a bunch of just of our blended together and it was so good for hair right here these this could either be that's a shame y'all this could either be a uh broccoli or a cauliflower <laughs> i don't know which one it is but we shall find out okay now i'm going to show you a bunch of red cups these were all in tiny little cells and they were they had to come out because they were drying out so small because they only had a little bit of soil in them so i replanted a lot of this stuff yesterday with soil that i made okay i have a video of it it will be posting soon this is an eggplant i love growing eggplants they are so beautiful look at this new leaf forming right here gorgeous right so beautiful so pretty look 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 like a pretty little lady doesn't she? look look gorgeous that's an eggplant okay and up here we've got another eggplant this is in a big one and it's crazy this is an eggplant in a big container of soil and this one is in a little container of soil but they're like no this one looks bigger this one looks bigger this one is this one's wider i guess but if you look at the roots maya loves to see roots whenever she sees a plant she always looks at the roots it's, and a lot of times when we do potting plants we'll take the the plant out and we'll smell the roots and it smells just like whatever we'll be eating and maya loves she'll be like oh look at all those roots <laughs> so yep that's the eggplant all right so i planted some onions here that's getting dry this one does not have a bottom watering it's getting warm last year i had a bunch of my stuff dry out and i had to keep running out here the plant the pepper plants which i'll show you in a second were, were laying kind of leaning and you know they were suffering because it would get too hot and then the soil would be so dry and then i water again but then I'm, i got classes you know i'm teaching I'm, I'm running back and forth this year i put this bottom watering and when i tell you they drink this up when it's warm out they drink the next day there's nothing there they just drink it up so uh eggplant right here is arugula this one of the plants they were kind of suffering because they were small i put them in here and now i'm, I'm seeing what they do this is more arugula okay that's a pineapple <laughs> it's compost y'all it's compost okay <laughs> but that is a pineapple and now some of this stuff like i said suffering is going to come back uh i know it's going to come back but it was suffering because it was too tightly packed in the cells and i had so much going on that i didn't get a chance but i put them in here i gave them some good soil with some nutrients i used uh like whatever i had in the kitchen and got some pineapple it was some collard greens right and i took that and used the juice the uh broth and i poured it also in there they love that stuff now this this lady is the star of the show honey this is a japanese eggplant and she's purple my favorite color okay and if you look closely you can see a, a flower is about to bloom first come flowers then come fruit and the eggplant is going to come from that and the eggplant is perfect so let's look at what it's going to look like child i cannot wait so pretty the flowers on this plant are gorgeous okay gorgeous all right all right, let's go over here. Cilantro got repotted on Mother's Day. Part of my Mother's Day wish was to come out here and garden with my girls, and we did. 
we repotted the cilantro it was in a much too small container kept drying out so we put it in this bigger container and now it's getting back green doing good you like it here don't you you need a bottom watering system going on or else you're going to dry out again just planted some new seeds here a couple days ago so we should see that soon we got to keep it watered okay this is more scotch bonnet seeds we're waiting to see i'm not sure what this is this could be a scotch bonnet seedling i'm not it doesn't look like it or it could be some seedlings that was just in the soil some seed these are my peppers look how gorgeous oh my gosh look how gorgeous we have this here what's this i gotta switch hands real quick for this i gotta show y'all i've never grown this before it's the restraint cayenne number two that sound hot don't it <laughs> why got a number on it <laughs> that sound hot i've never grown this before so i'm excited to try this one this is another one like that okay back here it's kind of leaning a little bit okay uh let's see over here we've got i was feeling spicy y'all hot red cherry pepper never grown that one before and then what's this one right here oh bonnie green pepper that's not hot i use a lot of green peppers in my cooking so i'm gonna i definitely want to have those in this year like the first year you know i didn't really know what i was doing with gardening look i gotta go through all these leaves oh a jalapeno pepper yep plant and what's this one it's the last one. Oh, another green pepper so i got two uh last year like i said i was a new gardener i was just excited that i planted seeds and stuff started growing i did not have a plan for when the food started producing so a lot of stuff we let ripen on the plant which is not good it, it attracts uh, uh bugs like gnats mosquitoes um the mosquitoes tore us up you know what i mean i didn't pay that much attention to it um but also the other thing is is that uh, you lose a lot of the plants and the plants stop reducing because you're not picking the fruit So I learned about that. So this year I got a plan. I know exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make it like that big thyme plant It's not gonna look like that because I'm gonna trim it all down and it's, I'm gonna make some thyme oil I'm gonna squash some garlic put that thyme in there. You know what I'm saying? Maybe something else because I don't know once I get in the kitchen whatever I'm feeling I will be pouring that over salads Okay and we'll be sauteing food with it. So I'm going to do that and also freeze the herb cubes in an in a ice tray with oil. I'm going to be doing that as well, putting it in a freezer. My husband got another freezer um, a refrigerator in a garage just for me, for my little, for what I want to eat and what I want to do. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, I didn't tell you about that yet. <laughs> I didn't tell you about that yet. This is... These are the watermelon seedlings. Look at all of them. They sprouted. Again, having a system this year for a lot of tomatoes and a lot of watermelon, okay? Because uh, something needs to be done, okay? Here's another one. And here's another one. Back here. Okay, what y'all want to see next? The basil? Looking pretty good. That made us some good old spaghetti. I made spaghetti. A Jazzy made it. I guided her through it with you know the regular stuff we put in spaghetti but also with the basil and the parsley and honey it was delicious all right i don't know what to show y'all next this is the last thing i don't know if i want to show y'all the mr stacky planter or my first time ever buying fruit plants besides strawberries i'm not sure what you want to see hmm let's see all right i'll do this one all right so <laughs> I have a fruit area, y'all. I, I wanted to grow fruit, too. I grew uh, vegetables last year. We had a lot of zucchini. A lot of zucchini, a lot of tomatoes, did some kale, some cucumbers, a green bean plant here and there. But this year, I'm taking it up a notch with the greens, and um, I, I know how to stake things up and do vertical gardening. So it's going to be a lot of good things. But I also wanted to grow some fruit. Like I said... I don't know what I'm doing. I'm learning. And I watch YouTube videos. So if anybody have any tips ever about this stuff, let me know. But this is uh, orange. Okay. Uh, this is going to have to definitely be trimmed. And I, and I learned how you can trim the, 
the plant. But this is oranges. I absolutely love oranges. It's my favorite fruit. Okay. Uh, patio. It's a patio tree. So it's not going to get too big. Thank goodness. All right. <laughs> and then on this side, I got a lemon tree. Okay. Look at this. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh my goodness. Aren't they gorgeous? I got these both from Home Depot. Uh, they were in water when I got them. So I keep them in a bottom watering system. This watermelon seed said, hey, can I hang with y'all? And then put it in here. Any leaves or whatever, I leave it right there. That's good for the plants. So this watermelon is hanging out. Okay. Uh, ask if we could come. Can I stay at y'all house? And he said, all right, sure. So they're all hanging out happy here. Okay, pretty soon I'm going to be making a compost tea with that uh, so that they can get some nutrients too. I have to learn how to do that. And then I've got uh, a blueberry plant for the first time. I always wanted to grow blueberries. I got y'all, yeah, I got this at all these. They just had plants sitting around. I'm like, what? They really just have plants just sitting around that you could take home and grow your own food? So I picked it up. This is experimental, it's my first time. Uh, so I planted this in a, and I'm going to see what else I need to put in it. But I gave it the, nap, the compost that I do in the kitchen. But I also put some pineapples in it because I'm like fruit. It's probably going to have stuff in it that uh, other fruit will love as far as the roots. The roots will love it. So after um, I took it out of the box. It actually was in a box. It's very busy. Some of this stuff got neglected to tell you the truth. Okay. Um, <laughs> so... It was in the box for for a while. It stayed together though. It really did. And I took it out and soaked the roots in water as part of package for I think it was the grapes. Ah oh, man, I just told you already that these are grape trees. Okay, all right, that's a grape vine. We'll get to that in a second. And then um, I potted it in here, and it's standing up. It's looking good. It loves it. We'll see how it works. Uh, still studying, still learning. Yes, I already told you this is a grape vine. Heard it through the grape vine. Look at that. I know you like what what trellis. I got ideas, okay? <laughs> I got ideas, okay? But again, same thing. Uh when it was in the house, it was in that box, it came with this soil, it stayed moist, the soil stayed moist because it was in a bag. Uh, so it, it held on when I had time to come out here and do it. Um, yeah, this is what's going on. So I don't, it's my first time growing grapes. Uh, I'm just watching it. I don't know if y'all saw me. I just really almost put my nose up to this plant. <laughs> but um, I'm watching it and I'm learning as I'm going. But that's what I have here. I've got, as far as fruit, I've got a grape vine. And I've got... Uh, and I'm going to do some homemade trellis back here, okay? The girls are going to help. And um, my husband helps too, right? Me, me and the girls really be back here a lot. Uh, so we got the blueberry, and we have the grape, and we have the orange, and we have the lemon. And we have strawberries. So I got two strawberry plants from Home Depot. But on Mother's Day, one of the Mother's Day activities i wanted to do was to come out and garden with the girls and put this together so luckily it had soil already in it with food scraps already in it that broke down already so the soil is really good it's really rich and all of this was in all of this stuff here can y'all see okay because i'm kind of getting kind of blinded all of this stuff here was in uh little cells that needed to come out is in little cells to need this that's more from my greens that's going to go into the plants little cells that needed to come out and since i put them in this planter they have just lo been loving it and taking off look the dill got bigger i got dill oh, i thought there was a bug on me <laughs> i got dill okay we got a, another rosemary you are my friend okay and i got parsley parsley loves it here we got green onions sage i had a sage plant last year it it grew so big it took over the whole bin i did not know it was going to grow that big but i have it a little small right now i don't use sage that much in cooking when i really use sage is around thanksgiving honey okay when i'm making that bird i like to use a bunch of different herbs so this is definitely going to be uh, chopped and put in oil 
and frozen. I'm gonna make my herb. I'm gonna make my herb blend now, okay? And I'm gonna put everything together that I want for the herbs with some garlic and everything and celery. I'm gonna uh, freeze them in cubes and I'm gonna put them in the freezer and title that freezer bag Thanksgiving Herb Oil. And then it's gonna be on and popping, y'all, okay? <laughs> If I'm still growing herbs around that time, which I probably am, we'll use fresh too, but I'm getting ready early. But this guy, oh my gosh, it, it grew so big. It took over everything. So I've got this, I've got more parsley on this side, can y'all see? And over here, another parsley going out, okay? And then, we got the strawberry. We had two strawberry plants. Now they produce runners, all right? So when they produce runners, they make another strawberry plant. I've done that before with strawberry plants. I gotta see what this kind, cause I just got them. I don't know that much about the different kinds, but I hope this is a runner too. And it looks like it might be. If we look closely right here, we see right here is where the, another strawberry plant would come. And then it just you just snap it off when it gets big enough. And what I learned is when it gets like three or four leaves, you snap it off, and now it's a new strawberry plant you planted. So this one's got strawberries on it, and we got one that's ripe over here. Look at this guy! I don't know if it's ripe enough though. I might wait a little bit longer. But I learned, like I said, we gotta pick stuff. We can't leave it on there because bugs come; they love it, and then they take over your whole strawberry plant. So a couple on Mother's Day, there were three ripe ones. So we, me and Jazzy and Maya, all picked the strawberry. We all ate it. Um, the it was delicious. Maya took one bite and she's like, "I like strawberries now." She she was really picky about strawberries. She didn't like them, but she took a bite of that strawberry plant, uh, strawberry off of the plant, and she loved it. And me, I loved it too. It felt really good. It tasted good. It, it, it was refreshing, but I could also experience the nutrients, the effect on my body. Something eat, something live off a plant is totally different than in the store. Like right off the plant is what I'm talking about. Then the last thing is on top of here, I did like a compost uh, system that's from a juice, apple juice container. I should take this off, huh? <laughs> Apple juice container. We'll we'll take that off later. It don't really matter though, because when everything grow out, it's gonna cover it anyway. These are lettuce seeds I put up here. So the top, when it grows, it's gonna be lettuce, and then the strawberries and the herbs and everything. And then on one side, I have the spinach. Uh, where did I put the spinach at? I can't even find it. It's on the other side. So the other side somewhere, where I put spinach seeds. So it's gonna have spinach in there too. So, that is the garden tour. That's it, y'all. Um, this is where I made the soil yesterday. I actually had a dilemma. I had a little bit of this soil left. I had a little bit of this soil left. And I, and I had to repot so many things. I was bugging, y'all. Oh, my gosh. And I didn't have a lot of time. I didn't want to go to the store and get some soil. Then I said, wait a minute, Sharita. You've got a bunch of pots over there that have soil in them just sitting here put them up so i put them over here and then like i said i got the juice from the greens and i poured that in there and i added the pineapple and whatever else i could find just threw it in here to mix it all together and that's what i made the soil but when i'm when i went in here and started digging around and i put the i put the i'm about to show y'all something real quick i put the bag on top so that it don't get dried out by the sun because there's a, there's an ecosystem happening in here there's there's living happening here matter so when i started dumping things out i saw oh my goodness sharita like it's got egg shells in it which is good it's got other food in it but it also had worms so let me see i don't want to disturb them too much but let me see if we could find some if i let's see if we can find some together there are tons in here but they smart. As soon as they feel the soil moving, they move. They be out, honey. Oh, y'all want to come out and play? Oh, there's one. Can y'all see that one? The sun. Let me take my shades off. Yeah, the sun is 
blocking me. I can't really. Oh, I think I think y'all got it. Yep. Y'all see that one? You see it moving? It's right here. And the worms are very good for you. You need worms if you're growing if you grow in a garden. You need worms. Like I know some people go to the store and buy worm castings, right? But I I rather just have the worm, okay? <laughs> right? Look at look, it's moving. You see? And what it's gonna do is just gonna go back into the soil. But it's been eating. It's been eating the stuff that I put in here yesterday, the food. It's been eating. There's bugs in here too, you know? But it's it, it was like I saw when I dumped that dog on pot out that had soil. It wasn't even a big pot. It wasn't even a big pot. Ten worms fell out. Like, I was like, what? And they were big too. And then when I was like going through the soil, I saw they had babies in here too. So they living in here. I'm not going to keep it in here because there's no drainage. This is my wheelbarrow. That's another change I did this year. I'm like, a sister ain't going to be hauling things around all the time. Uh, me and Jazzy moved every bit. If my husband be at work, we don't be wanting to wait. I be waiting sometimes if I want, if I want the couch lifted up when I'm vacuuming. Sometimes I do that just so I can see him lifted up. All right, well I digress. But <laughs> but as far as this, we just be making it happen. So that's what's going on here. I'm, I'm going to protect. This is life in here, and and everything works together and the plants work together. So I'm going to protect this. Put it in this bin take these out because this bin has holes on the bottom which is good you know it's gonna be good so it's gonna get air and it needs air okay um or i might i might put in another bin i'm not sure i never really know until i start moving and doing stuff okay so that is the i feel like it was one more thing that i thought about that i wanted to say with this gardening and I forgot <laughs> but I have said a lot you know if I think about it in the next couple of seconds I'll say it oh wait this right here this is craziness Look, check this out this was my compost uh, that I was putting compost in I bought it out in the garden you see this lettuce plant right here this lettuce plant came from the other lettuce bowl and Maya pulled it out by accident because you know if you pull out the plant that's it. You're supposed to pull out the leaves. You're not supposed to pull out the plant. You're not supposed to pull out the middle. But she pulled the whole thing out. And she's like, oh, sorry, I'm lying. It's okay. It's okay. I just, I just poked it, poked some soil, and plug it right. Do you know this thing is still going? It's still going. It's just found a new home. So, but it needs shade. This is a very sunny spot. This is a very sunny spot. So, it needs shade over here. So... I think I'll do this for the time being. Give it some shade. It's too hot. But it but it's found a new house. So this is the, this is what and I come out here and, and I feel good and I work. You know, I I was out here for hours. Hours can go by. I have to set timers. But I had a lot of work that I did while the girls were in school yesterday. But why am I doing this? It started when, when the pandemic hit, okay? Let me get my phone, Lord. It started when the pandemic hit. And everybody was all frantic. We couldn't go to the store and buy things. I would send my husband to the store, and I would have parsley on the list. And he would come home and say, there's no parsley. I'm like, what you mean there's no parsley? It wasn't just, it wasn't just tissue. It, it was food that we were used to eating. And... I just got so frustrated. I always wanted a garden, but I'm like, forget that mess. And that's how I am with everything. When it comes to improving kids' behavior, uh, my own kids' behavior, if nothing's working, I'm like, forget that mess. I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to do it. If it come, When it comes to their learning, same thing. And it comes to, that's why I encourage moms to, to make a plan for whatever they want. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't, your child won't be able to do something. Or this is how, what kids how kids do or if your child has ADHD this is a symptom of ADHD so one of the characteristics so this is this is how it is this is what it is and then just accept it don't let nobody tell you that mess because I've seen way too many transformations when we take matters into our own hands and I'm not saying go against everybody else 
uh, sometimes you do have to but what i'm saying is you can accept help from other people and professionals but understand that you are your child's first and last teacher you're their mother so and you 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 there all the time and you know what's best you're there from the beginning to the end honey all right so that's how that was my attitude with this i'm just going to grow my own stuff because i ain't got time to be dependent on the grocery stores and started i started and then it turned into something else was eating healthier and this this year really tailoring for our health me and my husband we get older you know we're in our 40s now so we we really focusing on taking it easy instead of you know stressing working so hard and also eating healthier and growing our own um and then it turned into the kids just loving to garden and knowing so much in, about gardening touching her maya touched her first worm this uh like last month she was so nervous but she saw me touch my first worm because i was i was nervous about it but when she saw me do it then she did it okay there's the hole that maya been digging in for two years now she's been digging in this little hole she even planted some you know so no it wasn't it was green pepper Sometimes she'll get, she had a Chick-fil-A cup and she put some soil in and put some seeds in it, you know? So it's important for our kids to learn about where food comes from and, and to know how to rely on themselves. Like if the stores don't have it, that's all right, because we have it, but we also have it's better and we take care of it. We don't know where the food comes from and how they raised it and everything. So that's, that's why. And plus my girls learn a lot. Maya can now at five years old read all of the seed packets you know when we plant seeds you know and jazzy uh knows how to repot plants you know what i mean take them out of the little little one put it in a bigger container so they they just they just learn a lot you know so that's why i started it now is a love of ours we couldn't wait for the spring but we've had spring gardens before, but we haven't been very successful with the fall garden. So I'm preparing ahead of time so that we can have food in the fall as well. All right. But thank you guys so much. Remember what we talked about in the beginning. Please set up a schedule for your kids so that they can go back to school equipped, uh, ready to learn with some structure, some self-discipline and self-control. Plus their brains will be buzzing with everything that they learned over the summer. And it's easy for them to adapt to the learning that the teacher is providing. Less work for the teacher to get your child focused and on point. A better, earlier start for your child in a more successful school year. And that's what we want. I want the best for you and your children. I want your children to have the best school year they ever had. But we're not gonna start in September, we're gonna start now, all right? All right, so um, also we have this summer tutor program uh, coming up, a tutoring and coaching. I improve kids' behavior, focus, literacy, and math all at the same time. Because I learned when I transitioned from being a mental health specialist to a special education teacher that you can teach kids how to read uh, and improve their grades and function on grade level when they were way below grade level for years. You can completely turn it around when they are... Uh, improving their behavior focus and when we're combining behavior and learning strategies that's what I've been doing um, when I became a teacher and that's what I do in my tutoring coaching program I'm working with kids for over 15 years and I've seen a lot of success stories and improvement okay so for more information on tutoring coaching for your child uh, from a coach okay I was a special education teacher and uh, uh, I was a mental health specialist, and I'm also a mom. I got mom experience, okay? <laughs> all right? Um, uh, so, really, I'm a coach. I combine all of that together, okay? Uh, for more information on that, you can send me a message, of course. But also, go to growthinstitute.mykajabi.com. That's G R O W T H Institute dot my kajabi dot com and you will find all the information and then you can also find out information about pricing so now i like to end coming to one of my most favorite plants and that's my peppers and we'll just look at my peppers for a minute oh we got peppers over here i didn't even tell you about 
red bell, red bell, good, green bell pepper, and another jalapeno. Okay, there we go. All right, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Nancy, thanks for hanging with me today. Believe in yourself. Believe in your child, honey. And always remember that growth is unlimited. Love y'all. Peace.